Dueling Dialogues is brought to you by our affiliates at hostpapa.com. Click the banner on the rightleftchronicles.com for premium unlimited web hosting with the highest rated reviews at the lowest prices. Coming to you from that once forgotten artery that pulses through the center of the continental United States and into the heart of the Ozarks, Grace Matthews. Looking in from the northern border, our Canadian friend, along with his countrymen, feeling the effects of U.S. political issues, Connor Murphy. Welcome to Dueling Dialogues, episode 111. I'm Connor Murphy here with Grace Matthews. Hi, Grace. How you doing? Doing great. It's Friday. Good. Yes, I know. I, I've been so busy all week, it seems like Thursday. You know, it's been a very busy week. Yeah, it's been crazy. I've actually got a lot accomplished, but I love the weekends because I'm doing these cooking extravaganzas. Ah, right. So I always kind of start on Friday. Just now I made some Russian dressing from scratch, authentic oh. style. Wow, so cool. It's kind of fun, yeah. I don't know if I've ever had it. Um, it's been a long time. My dad, he went through school as a chef. And mm-hmm. so every now and then he would make some really cool stuff for us. And one of the best things he made was made from scratch Russian dressing. Very authentic. Very, It may be more authentic to New York than actually Russia. But when you live in the Midwest, yeah. that's close <laughs> enough. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So cool! I'll have to send me the recipe. I'll have to try. I will. I will because you've got those Russian type roots. So oh yeah, you I bet. really like it. It's delicious. Well, Ukrainian, Polish, not really Russian, but I guess it's close. Well, the region. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of New York, our first question today is sort of inspired by the uh, race for attorney general in New York. Oh, okay. So I just want to throw that out there because um, it's, it's kind of a little, you got to give it some thought. Could microaggressive racism be defined by white people screaming at other white people and accusing them of being racist and xenophobic, all for the sake of a political race? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, no white person knows what it's like to be black. They don't know what it's like. I mean, if you're not gay, you don't know what it's like to be gay. I mean, only a person that is authentic to the issue at hand knows what it's like. I mean, you can empathize with them, even sympathize. But I am really getting tired of white people, and they tend to be women, and I can say that because I'm a woman. Right, that right. Get out there, run for office, and scream at everyone about how racist, how xenophobic they are. Yeah, pretty much. And they're going to get in office, and they're going to fix that by doing what? Killing all the white people? <laughs> It, it's definitely a political strategy. And it, I mean, we've ha- even had Q mention, you know, the, the little micro wars that that are being created nowadays, not just between whites and blacks, but we're talking men, women, straight, gay. I think the strategy uh, comes down to divide and conquer. Isn't that the, the war well, strategy? All, yeah, but it's such a wuss thing to do. You do not deserve to win any political race if that it has to be your tactic if that's all you got. Pointing out the other person's home. faults. Yeah, I, yeah. I totally Stay agree home. with that. And pretending you know what it's like to be part of one of these groups. Well, you know what? That's how Trudeau got into office because all the other parties were, were slinging shit at, you know, the liberal government and Trudeau and everything. And he stayed on the positive side. He never acknowledged all the bad things. He just stayed really positive. And a lot are basically say that that's what won the election for him. So, hmm, they're, they're, <laughs> I don't know. Two sides to every coin, I guess. It, do you or don't you? Look what we got now in Canada. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a mess. That's so, a big mess. So you you got to do your research and you got to pick the right candidate, not just what media is telling you or what your neighbor or the next person down the road is telling you to vote for. Figure it out on your own. Absolutely. I'm, I'm listening to all sides. Wow. That sounded maybe a little bit uh, aggressive, I think. Yeah, I'm fed up with that. Really. Yeah, yeah. Well, and there is a war against people that aren't pro- part of a subculture. And, you know, you want to say... 
why can't we all just live together? Yeah. I mean, why, I mean, why do we have to make yeah. a deal out of it? Yeah. You know, when I meet somebody, it's not the first thing I say, oh, they were black. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, that really doesn't occur to me. It's not that I don't notice it, yeah. but that's not what I'm likely to be struck by. Exactly. I'm going to be, you know, what we are struck by as people, you know, is how people make us feel. If someone makes us happy, someone makes us sad, someone makes us nervous, you know, that's what normal people judge a situation based on. Absolutely. It may sound a little narcissistic, but that's what we do. Yeah. That are our senses, you know. How does that person make me feel? Exactly. I mean, you know, and you they tell you that when you're selling something, you know. The condition upon which a sale is made is how you make that person feel that's buying it. That's more important than the product. Doesn't matter. I'm still writing as is on the receipt. (laughs) (laughs) We're not talking about garage sales, okay? Okay. (laughs) But I I think there are subtle ways, too, that people are saying, just like you just did, enough is enough. And that kind of leads us to my next question for you, Connor. Okay. Are conservatives abandoning mainstream movies, like box office movies, for less political actors that happen to appear in Lifetime and Hallmark movies? Because they are whopping killing it. As the box office goes down, Lifetime and Hallmark are, they, you know, people are running to them. Yeah, and I I could definitely see that because we've now got a studio here on Vancouver Island, um, like a a Hollywood-sized studio, and uh, that's where they film Chesapeake Shores, and that's a Hallmark production. Oh, yeah, very popular one. Yeah, we've got a lot of directors, like we're talking Academy Award-winning directors moving to the island here, searching for property as well to be closer to the studio because, of course, uh, the difference in our dollar from the U.S to Canada, plus the the tax breaks that that productions do get when they film in Canada uh, makes it, you know, they they could probably do the same production for you know, half of the, the cost. So Hollywood North is booming. It's it's crazy out here right now. I think there's over 30 productions, either TVs or movies, currently being filmed in the province of BC. So I think you are right, you know, and you haven't really seen a lot of new big movies coming out other than, you know, the those studios that you're talking about. And the of course, Weinstein's, their absence has, has changed the Hollywood landscape big time. It, have, it has, and Weinstein certainly was a promoter of big box office. Yeah. Big box oh, office sure. means left of left. And even even people that are Democrats mm-hmm. are tired of the socialist left. Yeah. And I mean I can and see And Hollywood it. represents that. Yeah, so I I could definitely see it. I agree with that situation or that statement, sorry. Well, speaking of left of left, we know that CNN has become left of left. I mean In Tampa the other day, um, during President Trump's, I don't know, campaign-type speech, (laughs) it was certainly a rah-rah-rah fest, Uh, um, in support of the DeSantis, who is running for governor of Florida, they were chanting, CNN sucks, CNN sucks. (laughs) Well, Jim Acosta, who is the CNN the guy that is always in with Sarah Sanders in the news briefings, he covers D.C., right. Capitol Hill, and he gives her trouble all the time. I mean, he is abusive. I'm going to say he's misogynistic. Oh, you're probably right there. Yes. I, I mean, he really treats her like crap. Yesterday, he picked a fight with her. He's like a troll. He is a troll. Exactly. <laughs> And he wanted her to say that the media was not the enemy of the people. And she wasn't going to say it. <laughs> wow. If you get a chance, you need to listen to it because she brought up a point. She has been threatened to the point she is the first press secretary to have, you know, the Secret Service detailed. Wow. She has to be protected 24-7. And part of it has been brought on by some things he said to her. So by gosh, she was not going to say that she believed that the that the media was not the enemy of the state. And I, I should add that this was on the heels of 
Ivanka being asked that. Wow. And I'm, Ivanka said that she did not believe that the media was the enemy of the state. But she did, however, say the fake news was, which is exactly what the president says. Right. Nevertheless, because Sarah Sanders would not answer that question, Jim Acosta walks out of there huffing and puffing. Good. Now, what I would like to say is would somebody, I mean, he's got to have somebody, a friend, a family member, a co-worker, a boss, tell him that he is coming across like a narcissistic, misogynistic ass. Yeah, and he definitely. needs to quit making the news about him. I hope the door hit his ass on the way out. I hope it did, too. Good. Well, nasty. In addition to people screaming and yelling, <laughs> CNN sucks, <laughs> there was a Q sign ah. right in front of the president. Q is here. Okay? <laughs> there you now, go. Now, there was a lot of articles about <laughs> how this is a conspiracy, fringe group of crazies. Well... I mean... They said much worse things. They acted like it's the first time that sign's been there. It's been there almost every time hmm. in the past, let's say, six, eight months. Right, yeah. So they need to wake up and smell the roses. But suddenly, Q is starting to make them nervous. Yeah, slowly people are, are starting to look into some of the QAnon and, and starting to figure this out that, hey, this actually makes a lot of sense. And I mean, it explains a bunch of conspiracy theories. So no doubt it becomes yeah. this conspiracy theory, whether it's actually true or not. I don't know, but I'm I don't know I, I'm, either, leaning, but... I'm leaning to the side where I think it's true and I hope it's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure that you could take part of what Q says, the leaks, because they're they're a little cryptic a little bit of hyperbole and create a conspiracy theory out of it. But Q in his or herself, we don't really know if it's a him or a her, is not a conspiracy theory. It's really a lot of times a precursor to something that happens. Right. So in interesting stuff. Absolutely. Something has gone on in Chicago that I think is one of those defining moments oh. for President Trump. You know how one day something happens and you, you realize that possibly the pundits are not right? Right. I mean, in 2016, I don't know what moment a lot of people were like going, eh, this guy could win. There, There's signs out there that suggest that he might just win. He might just beat Hillary. Well, they keep saying, the pundits keep saying that the Democrats are going to take over Congress in this midterm election coming up in November. There's a lot of little signs that I keep seeing that say, wait a minute, I don't really think so. Chicago okay. is, I mean, is there a place that is more left? <laughs> I do, uh, yeah, L.A. L.A.? Yeah. That's about it, Okay. <laughs> I'm not even sure New York is more left than Chicago. I mean, we all remember that Obama came from there. Right. We all must remember that Rahm Emanuel was a chief of staff for Obama for two or three years of his presidency. He left to run for mayor of Chicago. He won. People have been dying. Wow. People have been shot. About 3,600 shootings since the first of the year. That's like more dangerous than New York City in their heyday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Way worse. Worse than Detroit. You know, Detroit was an armpit at right. one point. Worse than Atlanta. This is probably the worst a city has been wow. in the United States. So even Democrats, there was a couple of state Democrats today that were on the air, and they shared, first of all, they all wanted Ron to resign. But they said, you know what? If you're not going to resign, come down here to hell, where our <laughs> kids are getting shot, where we can't even let our kids go out in the street. We are hiding wow. our children. Unreal. I said, come down here. And, you know, whether you come down here or not, we don't care. We want the, the help that President Trump offered, you know. You should not refuse it because these are our kids dying, not yours. Wow, sad. But for a community like this to reach out to someone like Trump in a place that almost no Republican lives, <laughs> yeah, I, I think you have to wonder 
how far is, how deep, I guess, is President Trump's support? I think it's deeper than one might think. And everyone knows if you're going to give him the tools he needs to get the work done, he promises you got to give him the Congress, you got to give him the Senate. Yeah. You don't even maybe like the guy that's running in your district that well, but you still know you got to give it to Trump so he can do the things he promised. Well, something needs to be done for sure. Yeah. I mean, I just, Chicago scares me. Yeah. Um, my son has spent a lot of time in Chicago with his old company. And every time he went there, I just, I just cringed. Wow. And and he was out in the burbs. You know, the, the office where he was was somewhat out in the burbs, and it still scared me. Wow. Not good. No. And we're back almost to football time again. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> anyway, Woo-hoo. Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott, he's getting a lot of pushback on social media because he said he's going to stand for the, for the um, national anthem. Oh. And he said it's not because... He's being told to. He wants to. He said it's also not because he doesn't think that there is police brutality out there, but he plans to do something about it on his off time, not when he's on the job. Good for him. A man with a... Yeah, a man with a brain, finally. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, good. Good for him. I agree. Okay, what about Apple? The first trillion dollar publicly traded company. Wow. A trillion dollars is a lot of money. That is crazy. It hit yesterday. You, you just, I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head around tr- a trillion. Yeah, I just can't even fathom how much a trillion is. You know how much they made for me? <laughs> None. 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 Yeah, that's my son. My son's an anti-Apple person. Yeah. Well, well I just got a new sense. phone, and it and it was a it's an Android phone. I've always had Android. Yeah, phone. yeah. My my son. I I have Apple. I have an Apple phone. I have an iPhone, but um, I yeah. don't have Apple computers. So. Well, most people, like, they would ask if they're getting something and say, do you have Apple computers? If you do, then go with the Apple phone. That was kind of always my advice. But, you know, they all do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the trade wars, especially with China, has had the investors a little skittish. I mean, a week ago, it sounded like we were going to work out a deal with China, and now... I don't know. It's, it seems like it's going to happen, but it's going to take longer, which has Wall Street. I don't know. They're, they're just saying, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little worried about this. How far will it go? How far will Trump let it go? Well, there's also pundits out there saying, you know, if he doesn't do it right now, when things are financially good for the United States, we'll have to do it later, and it could push us into a recession. Oh, wow. If we do not straighten out trade with China, China will become the superpower. There's a lot of people that already think they are. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of wondering they rank above the United States. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering myself at this point. I don't know. Well, and a 600 billion dollar deficit, they are hacking about as much as as Russia Pretty and much. they are technology thieves. You know, they do that reverse engineering right. and steal all our stuff. Right. You know, well, uh, they're pirates. Yeah, That's and, what they are. But. And, I, and you got to wonder if that doesn't hurt them in the long run, because, you know, I, I was just talking to a friend the other day and he does renos like home renos. So he's always dealing with, you know, products that come through big corporations and building supply companies. And now all those supply chains are coming from China. And he says, like, the cabinetry is made to European standards not North American yeah. standards. And so everything's off-sized. And he says it'll just be oh, one. Yeah. It, he says it'll be one millimeter. But he says that one millimeter means a difference whether your sink's going to leak or not. So Oh, yeah, it matters. So he refuses to do work if they buy cabinets from certain places now. And he says, the, the, you know, the quality is just, it's not there. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, I remember a few years ago, when China, when everybody started buying the drywall from China, yeah, yeah, and all these houses had to be torn down, basically, or gutted because they had mold. There was mold inside the drywall. Oh, yeah, wow. it was cheaper. You know, cheap is <laughs> not always better. 
Oh no, I never heard that one. Oh, oh yeah, there were people sick. It was it was terrible, and you couldn't even really sue because it's a Chinese company. Yeah, where are they and now? You were an idiot yeah. for buying the Chinese drywall, you know, wow. or your builder was better yet. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh. Wow. Unreal. So I don't know. I think it hurts them in the long run to have all those cheap knockoffs happening. You know, I don't think there's any advantage of that. And eventually, you know, hopefully they go out of business. But yeah, well, hopefully, know. yeah, the market would take care of it. I understand what you're saying. And that's the idea behind capitalism is that the market will take care of it. But sometimes the cost, you know, even health wise to people is um, a little scary. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, yesterday before Sarah Huckabee Sanders and um, Jim Acosta had their argument, several cabinet members, in fact, most, got up to the podium and gave a little speech on election security for the midterms. They really did not give answers or clues to what they're going to do or, you know, how they're going to make the election safer. I guess that would be a secret. Right, right. They did, though, kind of reiterate their commitment. Hmm. They also did not refer to it. They said Russia is still doing it, will still do it, as if we didn't all know that. (laughs) But they sort of reiterated the fact that it's not just Russia. Of course not. Which... You know, we keep saying over and over again. If you think that, you know, there's so many other countries that are doing things just like that. I mean, I think probably even Canada does it. I'm sure they do it. Every country does it. So, yeah. Good luck with that, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. How do you Only we stuff? should be able to do it because we're special. But well, I keep of course, saying that yeah. Here. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but something special did happen this week. Oh, uh, the vice president received the fifty-five caskets. Oh, you know, right. I, from North Korea, at least they are supposed to be the remains of 55 servicemen that served in Korea and were hostages or were killed in the North Korean region. Wow. Um, it was a very special time for a lot of people that said goodbye to their fathers when they were two or three or four and never saw them again. There's wow. a lot of heartwarming stories that came out of there and... Um, just a very special time for some 60 to 70 year olds that are hoping to have something of the, their fathers. Yeah. So it, it gave me a lot to think about. Yeah, no kidding. No doubt. I would definitely agree there. Yep. And we don't always agree, but life's a journey and we're all in this together. Thanks for listening. Godspeed, Connor. Godspeed to all of our friends out there. Godspeed, Grace, and thanks for listening. Dueling Dialogues is brought to you by our affiliates at HostPapa.com. Click the banner on the RightLeftChronicles.com for premium unlimited web hosting with the highest rated reviews at the lowest prices. 